Hey and welcome. My name is Eric and I'm from Games for Hyper. Let's take a look uh, today at PCG, uh, Procedural Content Generation. And I want to show you off the product that we made and it is about a procedural content generated uh, forest. So let's dive into this. Imagine you have a large landscape just like this, large island. Uh, we place a PCG volume, the one that uh, is included in the package. And we can press generate and just live here, bam, it's generated on a large scale. It looks amazing from a play perspective. So we can press play and it's generating some foliage. And now we have a procedural generated forest. Let's take a look at this other example. Uh, what you see here is our multiplayer survival template. And our multiplayer survival template is uh, and this, this, this pine forest is also generated with uh, the PCG graph, the same one of the package. And this one is a pine forest, but it also spawns um, uh, mineable rocks like this. It spawns fiber in the world, sticks, rocks on the ground to pick up. Um, but in this case, they are uh, actors instead of static meshes. So I just wanted to show you this so you can also know that you switch it to uh, actors. So let's take a look at an example when we spawn actors in the world because static meshes are obviously not interactable, but uh, you are able to spawn uh, this fiber or rocks or sticks and also these trees, which we are able to chop down like so. And all of this is being spawned with a PCG volume. So it's good to know uh, uh, that you are able to use this as skill for a large example. Ooh. Let's take a quick look on how this PCG volume actually works. So we have this volume here in the world. I can delete it. Um, and it is right here in the hyperfolder PCG. The PCG example, you see PCG graph. This is the one that you can drag into the world. And you are able to scale this like, oh, like so. And now based on uh, what overlaps with the volume, uh, in that volume, it will generate that forest. It's also good to know that this volume um, is generating everywhere where there is a physical material. And that physical material is assigned on this landscape. And if it's not generating, it means that there are no physical material outputs. You can always check this build, build physical material only, to make sure that the landscape is generated any physical materials. And why do we do this? Because uh, like this one, here we see a rock is the physical material right here, dirt, and there is grass. We don't want to generate certain things on grass, um, and we don't want to generate certain things on rock. So now you see that the rock is clear of the trees and uh, uh, stones and cliffs uh, and especially also uh, uh, rocks etc are more generated on uh, on the sides on the slopes if you generate this you can also add a blueprint in the world this is a pcg exclusion box that i created and if you generate it right here you see everything within this yellow box uh, the PCG will not generate there. So that's really easy if you want to have an open environment, uh, like an open spot right here. It's more easy to just do it like that. Another thing, the grass that you see right here is not generated with the PCG. It's uh, just a landscape generation uh, because it was more easy like that. Uh, this is purely focused on the trees, the rocks, the foliage, the bushes. So let's take a, a deeper look into this. Um, this PCG graph right here, this is, uh, is consisting out of different subgraphs. And the subgraphs are generating specific layers within the forest. Uh, obviously, we have trees, but also we want to have mineable rocks. Uh, some forest debris. Uh, forest debris are things like a, uh, trunks uh, and these kind of things. I don't spawn them a lot, so it's a bit harder to find. 
Um, and also the um, uh, foliage that's more interactive. That these are like sticks, mushrooms, um, fiber, uh, flowers, whatever you need. And also bushes, uh, just uh, for instance, like berry picking, uh, these kind of things. These PCG graphs currently only spawn static meshes, but you're able to switch them uh, yourself to actors. Let's take a look on how the PCG graph looks like. Here we have this forest example, and it's basically um, uh, this one is making sure to uh, generate, uh, get references from physical materials, because that's what we are using right here. If we don't want to use a physical material filter, uh, that's also possible. Just use a, uh, I think, the landscape uh, outputs. That will also work perfectly. Um, based on uh, the physical materials, uh, the surface, it's, we're going to check the surface samplers and uh, spawn it with a certain points per square meter. And then we are going to use these points to generate trees, uh, forest debris, uh, interactive foliage, mineable rocks, and bushes. You can add other things if you like that. We will merge them, we prune them, so there are no overlaps with each other. Then we exclude things, and based on the exclusions, uh, then we have our final points. And these final points, that's where we generate our uh, uh, meshes from. So here we have all the trees that we spawn, and the trees are big trees, middle trees, and small trees. The debris, it is a, a large trunk, a smaller trunk, and a, a rectangle trunk. Interactive foliage is uh, like, um, let's, let's focus more on core foliage, like rocks, sticks, and fiber. We want that to be uh, spawned a lot. And uh, like mushrooms and flowers. Let me check. Uh, this is a, a flower. This is a clover plant, a corn flower, poppy, uh, some reeds, some yarrow, feathers, uh, heather, uh, leaves, mushrooms, uh, and another feather. Just because uh, I wanted to have a bit more feathers. Also the rocks, and also the mineable rocks, and the bushes. So let's take a, a bit uh, of a deeper look into this, because uh, there is something crucial in this, and that is density propagation. And I would like to talk to you a bit about that. What I made is a density propagation uh, subgraph. And what does it do? Uh, it has one set of points uh, that's going in it. And based on that, we are going to propagate that into three different densities. Um, just an example, let's take a look at the trees. Yes, why not? That's a perfect example. So I made this uh, density propagation subgraph, and now I've opened the subgraph of the trees. And what we do, we use this to spawn big trees, medium trees, and small trees. Uh, instead of trying to figure out how uh, the points are placed, etc., you can simply say, okay, I want to give the density one uh, this amount of coverage. So I'm saying everything until the density of uh, 0.65, it goes to one, by the way, um, uh, uh, will be used for density one. So that means I give a lot more priority to the big trees. And we see there are a lot of big trees. The rest, but everything between 0 0.65 and 0 0.8 will be the medium trees. And the medium trees are uh, these, uh, uh, these beautiful Scots pine. And the rest, so everything between 0 0.8 and 1 will be the small trees. And these are the small ones. So let's say I want to have more uh, big trees. That means we can do it like this. And now it will have a, a lot more big trees. Uh, uh, and the medium trees are 
really sm uh, small amount right now. But what if we want a lot of more small trees? So let's make sure to spawn it like this. So 50% is a big tree. 20% uh, is the medium tree. Uh, let's do it a bit less. And now uh, the rest will be the small trees. Obviously, the small trees are less visible. However, the amount of small trees are way more now. And you can use this function, the, the subgraph, for all the things. So for the mineable rocks, for uh, interactive foliage, uh, for instance, you would like to give more priority to fiber or stone rocks. This is the one that you are able to change. So now we say a lot of small trees, only a couple of uh, big trees uh, and a bit of medium trees. So this is now the look. How cool is that, right? It is good to know that the points which are generated, and just example these trees, uh, we are assigning them uh, uh, tags uh, like this. So now we have that these points we assign three large, three mediums, etc. And we're actually able to read that out and uh, right here in our point filters to say, I only want the three large points. And on these three large points, I am going to spawn this specific mesh. If you don't want to use a st static mesh, but you want to spawn an actor, you can just make a spawn actor and define one, and then it will switch to an actor instead of a static mesh. That's also the reason why I don't have an, uh, a large array of different meshes. Uh, it has only one array element because now you're able to switch that specific one to an actor. And if you have trouble finding points, you can always press uh, D for debugging. And now it will show a block on the points. Ah, oh, here, perfect one. Because I was searching for the debris, and this one is called debris, and because it spawns uh, this one, but I can also do points on that. You see that blue dot for making sure to show uh, where it is. Oh, apparently here is one. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a, a stump of a tree. We didn't see it uh, because it did not stick out of the grass a lot, but it is there. And if we disable the points again, you will probably see it a bit. Yeah, like that. Perfect. So that is how you know where the points are located. I think this should give a good overview of what the system is capable of. It's not uh, too advanced. It is nothing like... Uh, road generation or uh, a real cliff placement alongside rivers or whatnot but this will help you a lot generating a, a complete forest with uh, proper uh, density propagations i hope you like it let me know what you think of this and i hope you have a nice day congrats you have reached the end of this video and of course uh, always feel free to reach out for instance in the comments below via discord or mail and don't forget to check out our website and Discord. I'm happy to talk to you there. Have a nice day. Bye.